The first way to annoy your supervisor is to not turn up to meetings on time or at all. That was one of my biggest issues when I was supervising master student or co-supervising students with an academic is that we would arrange times to meet up and then they would just simply not show up. Now, as a postdoc, I would often have to show people how to operate certain instruments or do certain things. And I had one student in particular who said, okay, I'll be at your office at this time. And I was there waiting and he didn't turn up. And then I saw him walking to lunch later that day and I was like, excuse me, but like, where were you this morning? And he was like, he said, oh, I wasn't feeling great this morning. So I decided to blah, blah, and whatever. And I said, look, that's no problem. Can you just let me know? Because I'm going to sit there for about 15, 20 minutes going, is he going to turn up? Yeah. Is he going to turn up? Yeah. And that was really frustrating. So that's the first and biggest way you can annoy your PhD supervisor is to not turn up when you say you're going to turn up. Now, a PhD supervisor, their whole life is run on a calendar. People are putting stuff in their calendar. They've got meetings here, meetings there. One of the most busiest supervisors I ever had had to, had to put in breaks into his calendar. Otherwise, people would just fill it with stuff and he'd go from one meeting to another meeting to another meeting. And so if you do not turn up for one of the slots that is in their calendar, um, you can end up just really annoying them because that time could be used doing something else. So yes, always turn up on time to supervisor meetings, even if if you feel anxious and you're not quite sure what you're going to say, every single face-to-face -face meeting is very valuable. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails, everything from the tools that I use, how to write an awesome abstract and more. And that information is only available on that newsletter. So go sign up. The second way you can annoy your PhD supervisor is becoming a Yeti. Now go check out the five types of PhD students, my other video, but essentially they, the Yeti was a student that just disappeared, disappeared into the ether and you never knew where they were. So if you're not in the lab, if you're doing science and research based stuff, or if you're not in your office, if you're doing humanities based um, PhD, then you know your supervisor assumes you are not doing work. Now I understand that is certainly not the case. A lot of people like to work from home and that's absolutely fine, but being visible to your PhD supervisor is a very important thing because they like to walk past and go, oh, I've got an idea for this person. And actually having those kind of slight interactions, those small interactions when you pass each other, when they see you in the lab, that is very important. You can also annoy them. I, in the sciences, we would have to be in the lab when there were visitors around because you know when there's people in the lab, it looks busy and it looks awesome. And uh, if you're not in the lab and it, they can't show off how busy their lab is, then that can really annoy them. So being around, being present in the university or being present in other ways, like if you're doing it via distance, being present on email, keep on sending those emails because they're going to see you more often. You're going to be at the front of their mind and they may help you, you know, when they when you pass them. But if they don't respond to your emails, just keep sending them. Don't expect anything back. But that is your way to keep that kind of intimate contact between you and them throughout your PhD. So yes, spend time in the office, spend time in the lab, make sure that if you can, you spend a good amount of time being near the research group because that can help you, um, you know, get more information, get more ideas, help collaborations. You know, locking yourself away to do a PhD can be tricky because you, you miss out on all of those awesome interactions that can spark new ideas. The third thing that can really annoy a PhD supervisor is not coming into a meeting prepared. And it's not that necessarily you need to like have all the answers, and it doesn't mean that you have to have results that are successful. You just need to be prepared. You need to tell a little story every single time you meet up with your PhD supervisors. So go check out my other video where I talk about the best ways to run a meeting and all of those tips for making it super successful. But essentially there's three components that need to be sort of discussed. First of all, results. What have you actually done since the last meeting? What have you uh, agreed to do the last meeting? What are the results of those things you agreed to do? And what are 
the solutions have you found to problems that you've solved? So another thing is a lot of PhD students take a back seat in their PhD and they expect their PhD supervisor to come up with the solutions. If you're not proposing solutions, that can be one way of really annoying your supervisor. And also you end up becoming um, a toy for them to play with because they don't, think about stuff before they you present it because they don't know what went wrong or what solutions you've got in your mind and they could end up sending you down this weird path. So problems you had, how you overcame them, or any potential solutions you've got for the problems you're going to face next week, and also your next steps. Having an idea before you go into a meeting is far more useful than trying to spitball it while you're there because it just doesn't, doesn't allow for sort of like easy, nice flow and transitions from one experiment to another. You need to be in the driver's seat. So turn up prepared and uh, turn up with all of the information, problems you've done, or like things you've done, problems you've found, how you solve them, how you going to solve them next week or how you'd like their help and the next steps that you think you should take. Now this is a conversation so they may not agree with you and they will help guide you because they're supervising you um, but ultimately you've got to be in the driver's seat and enter every single meeting with those things otherwise the supervisor's time could be wasted by uh, yeah just spitballing ideas and that isn't the most productive use of your meeting. So yes always turn up prepared, over-prepared if possible. Even if it's an informal discussion, like sitting down with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, I would always do a PowerPoint and go check out my other video where I talk about that in more detail. I would often have PhD students that I was co-supervising or master's students that I was co-supervising who didn't seem to do anything for weeks on end. Now, I understand some issues, you know, are outside of your control. So you can't get access to a certain instrument. That's a bit of a shame. Let's talk about what we can do to overcome that. But it's when the students kind of just come and they're very apathetic. You know, some students do lose motivation. And that is one thing that supervisors can impart is motivation. We can do our best motivational speech, but ultimately it's the student that needs to get out and do stuff. Now, the doing doesn't have to be successful. It doesn't need to work, but you always gotta be uh, sort of presenting this, this, this momentum to your supervisor. And so yes, if I speak to you a couple weeks in a row and you're like, well, I haven't done much, and you know, lots of excuses, that can get really annoying because I want to see Pro, uh, progress and I want to be part of the process of helping you get through your research. And uh, you know, I think it can be easy for anyone, not just PhD students, to come up with excuses. Well, this was this was bad. This person didn't get back to me. I struggled to get onto this instrument. I couldn't find this thing. I completely understand it. But the PhD, I always say to my students, a PhD is about solving problems you didn't even think you'd had. Yes, you've got your big PhD problem and question that you're solving, but ultimately it's all the little annoying things throughout the week where it's like, how do I get in contact with this person? How do I get time on this instrument? Where do I go to find this information? Who do I need to speak to to get that access? You know, all of these things are just part of a PhD in really annoying. So do not let those get in the way of your progress. Always be pushing, always be contacting people. And uh, yeah, you know, turning up to meetings with no progress for weeks, months on end, that can get very, very stressful for a PhD supervisor because it is their job to get you through it. And if they start you seeing you pull back, it can mean that uh, the early stages when you're pulling back, it really affects that kind of upward, upward momentum. So lay the foundation, keep pushing forward and always have something to report. Even if it is, I did these things and it went wrong. A good PhD supervisor relationship is all about discussion. It's all about disagreement. It's all about talking out issues. It is not about being combative. And that is a very important, but very sort of like gray area. Because when you're talking about things in an academically rigorous manner, sometimes it can come across as opinion. It can come across as a argument. But sometimes you just have to go, you know what? Even though I think you're wrong, I'm gonna run the experiment because a lot of people forget that the research needs to be done. You actually need to do the experiments to find out the results. Too many supervisors and PhD students start to believe that their thoughts 
are the reality. But sometimes you may disagree with your PhD supervisor and one of the tastiest things in the world is to disagree with them, but go, you know what, I'll run that experiment and for them to be a little bit wrong and for you to be right. Oh, I could eat that all day. But yes, you know, do the research. If you say, well, I don't agree with that, but let me run, the, run the, this quick experiment or let me do this small bit of research to see if that is a viable option. That is the appropriate way to tackle any disagreements. You know, sometimes it's just wrong and you can say you can point to evidence or research you've done in the past to say, yes, that is definitely wrong because I've done it in the past. Here it is and you'll have past uh, results to point to. But sometimes just don't be combative. Don't, you know, just argue for the sake of arguments. Having an academically rigorous conversation is very different to arguing. And sometimes you do have to say, you know what, I'll run that experiment just to prove you wrong. Another way to upset your supervisor in the long run is to not have any papers on the horizon. Now, academics love peer-reviewed papers because it's what propels their career forward. However, if you are not seen as part of that, those papers bubbling up to the surface throughout your PhD, you can actually upset them and annoy them because they're like, I need papers for my career. Now, this is a bad thing about academia. I've talked about it in other videos, but what I used to do to kind of help sort of like solve those issues is I would have on my presentations or a running list that I would share, like a document I would share with them, which is potential papers. So, okay, well, if I identify a little potential paper, maybe I can put it in this list. And then as I start sort of like doing more research, I can say, okay, I'm building up a pretty good story here that could become a paper at some point. So just being on the front foot with your supervisor all the time about you're thinking about papers, they're thinking about papers. So just being aware and putting that at the front, even if you, you know, writing a peer reviewed paper is ages off for you yet, don't worry about it. Just say to them, you know what? I think this could become an interesting paper because it fills this gap in the literature. We're not quite there yet, but let me put together a little structure. Or, you know, even if it's just the early days, these results could form a little paper on their own. And uh, that's what I thought about the story. And that will just help them feel more relaxed and say, okay, they are thinking about the actual academic process and they've got the end goal in mind. That will keep them sweet and dandy. So there we have it. There are all the ways that you can annoy your supervisor and what you can do to make it better. If this video has been useful to you, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And also go check out academiainsider.com. It's my new academic uh, portal for, I've got a forum, a community forum, which is awesome. Loads of people helping each other there. And also it hosts my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit. And there you can publish your papers quickly. It's got all of the building blocks and the superpowers that you can use to boost your H index. All right, go check it out. I'll see you in the next video.